today we're going to be talking about how to sketch a vector equation. And in this particular video, we're going to be dealing with two different vector functions. One is r of t, and keep in mind that for both of these, r is the vector and t is the parameter. So we're talking about a vector function for r in terms of the parameter t. So we have r of t is equal to the components here, sine t and t. And then we have our second equation here, which we'll get to in a second. Let's tackle this first one here. So we have these two component values, sine t and t. We can extract these two components as parametric equations. So sine t corresponds to our x component. So we can say x is equal to sine t. And then we can say y is equal to t. Now the most important thing to note about this vector equation in particular is that there's no z component. There's no third component here in our vector equation. Therefore, we couldn't pull out a parametric equation for z. We just have x and y. That tells us that we're going to be sketching the curve in an xy coordinate plane. Since there's no z component, it takes away that third dimension. Our whole sketch is going to be contained in an xy coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and draw here an xy coordinate plane. And we'll say here that this is the x-axis and that this is the y-axis. What I always like to do is use a parameter value of t equals 0 as the starting point for my sketch. So I like to set t equal to 0 and plug that into both of my parametric equations here to find corresponding values for x and y. So if I set t equal to 0, I'm going to get an x value here of sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So let me say here, t equals 0 gives me 0 for my x value. I plug in t equals 0 here to my equation for y, and I'm obviously going to get 0. So my coordinate point then is 0, 0. When t is equal to 0, when the parameter is equal to 0, I'm at a coordinate point of 0, 0. So let me go ahead and plot that coordinate point here. Now from here, where am I going to go? Well, the easiest way for me to sketch my curve is to eliminate the parameter here if I can and get an equation that's only in terms of x and y. In this case, that's pretty easy because we know that y is equal to t, so we can plug y in for t into our equation here for x, and this equation then becomes x is equal to sine of y. Now remember that when we have a normal equation, y equals sine of x, our sine curve looks like this. We have a curve like this that oscillates back and forth across the x-axis like so. When I have x equals sine y, when I flip the variables, I'm really just going to flip the graph. And here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to flip the graph and I'm going to come up this way essentially. And my graph x equals sine of y is going to look like this. Remember normally that my sine curve here when I have y equals sine of x, that it crosses the x-axis here at a value of x equals pi. Well, same thing here when I flip my curve, it's going to cross the y-axis at a value of y equals pi. So I can label that point there where it crosses the y-axis. I also know that with my regular graph y equals sine x, that my sine curve comes up and touches this line each time. This is the line y equals 1. So I'm going to have the same thing here. My curve x equals sine y is going to come and touch this line right here. And this is the line x equals 1. So that gives us a good sketch of the vector equation defined by the components sine t and t. Let's look at our second vector equation here where we have r of t is equal to t squared times i plus t to the fourth times j plus t to the sixth times k. I can take the coefficients on my i, j, and k components and put them into parametric equations or put them into the same form as my other equation r of t here. So here's what that looks like. I can just take out these coefficients and say t squared, t to the fourth, t to the sixth, or if I put them into parametric equations, I can say x equals t squared, y equals t to the fourth, and z equals t to the sixth. The first thing I want to notice here is that if I set my parameter value t equal to zero, remember before here we said t equals zero to find sort of a starting point for our vector equation. If I say t equals zero, for this curve, I'm going to get x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0, because I just have 0 squared, 0 to the 4th, and 0 to the 6th. I'm going to get 0 each time. So t equals 0 gives me a starting coordinate point 
at the origin 0, 0, 0 in a three-dimensional coordinate system. Here we do have all of our variables x, y, and z, so we're going to have this three-dimensional coordinate system and start at the origin 0, 0, 0. The other thing I notice is that as I take values of the parameter greater than 0, so t equals 1, t equals 2, etc., I'm always going to get positive values for x, y, and z. So for example, if I take t equals 1, I'm going to get x equals 1, y equals 1, and z equals 1. If I take t equals 2, I'm going to get x equals 4, y equals 16, and z equals 64. I'm always going to get positive values for x, y, and z. What that tells me is that my curve lies entirely in the first octant of my three-dimensional coordinate system. So let's start sketching our curve. The first thing I want to do is draw a three-dimensional coordinate system. And we'll follow the right-hand rule here, where we have our axes set up here as x, y, and z like this, I want to also draw in my coordinate planes. So I'm going to have the coordinate plane here, the xy coordinate plane, which is going to come in like this. This is going to be the xy coordinate plane. I'm going to have the yz coordinate plane, which is defined by my y coordinate axis and my z coordinate axis. This is the yz coordinate plane. And I'm going to have my xz coordinate plane, which is of course defined by my x and z coordinate axes. So x z coordinate plane here. The easiest way to do this is to first draw the projections of the curve along each of my coordinate planes and then use them like shadows to get a better picture of what the curve actually looks like. The one thing I know is that my curve is going to start at 0, 0, 0, so I'm going to draw this point here, 0, 0, 0. Now let's talk about projections. If I want to draw the projection of my curve on the xy coordinate plane, I need an equation for y in terms of x. Well, I know that x is equal to t squared, so if I make a substitution here, I can say that y is equal to x squared, because if I were to plug in t squared here for x, I would get t squared squared, which would give me t to the fourth. That's how I know that y is equal to x squared. So y equals x squared is going to give me the shadow on the xy coordinate plane of the parabola y equals x squared. So this is the shadow of my curve that sits on the xy coordinate plane. That's the equation y equals x squared. If I want the shadow of my curve in the xz coordinate plane, then I'm going to need an equation for z defined in terms of x. Well, if x is equal to t squared, then I know that z in terms of x will be z equals x cubed, because if I plugged in t squared here for x, I would get t squared raised to the third, or t to the sixth power, which is what I have here, z equals t to the sixth. So z equals x cubed is something I can graph in the xz coordinate plane. That's just going to be a little steeper than our y equals x squared graph here, but it's going to come up like this, and this is the curve here, z equals x cubed in the xz coordinate plane. Now if I want to look at my projection in the yz coordinate plane, I'm going to need an equation for z in terms of y. Well, how do I get that? Here I have an equation for z in terms of x, and I have an equation for y in terms of x. If I solve this equation, y equals x squared, for x, then I'll have an equation for x in terms of y, and I can plug that value for x into my equation for z in terms of x. So solving this for x in terms of y, I'll take the square root of both sides and I'll get x is equal to square root y. That's of course the same thing as x equals y to the 1 half power. Now if I take y to the 1 half power and I plug it in here for x, I'll get z is equal to y to the 1 half raised to the third. I multiply these exponents 1 half times 3 and I get z is equal to y to the 3 halves. Why do the three halves is even a steeper curve than this z equals x cubed here? And I'm going to graph that in the yz coordinate plane. When I do, that's going to look roughly like this straight up from here, that's z equals y to the 3 halves. Now if I want to use these projections like shadows to sketch my real curve, my vector equation, here's what I want to do. I want to start at my initial point where I said t was equal to 0 and I got this point back of the origin, so I know I'm starting here. And I want to sort of follow these projections like shadows. So when I leave this point, my projection in the xz plane tells me that I'm going to go up this way. My projection in the yz plane tells me that I'm going to go up vertically. And my projection in the xy plane tells me that I'm going to go out here in the positive direction of the y-axis. 
if I sort of continue to follow their paths, what I get here is a steep curve that maybe goes up quickly like this, and this is difficult to draw in three-dimensional space, but if I try to draw the shadow here, if you picture that this is three-dimensional, it's coming up and toward us and going up steeply, we can see how the shadow here of y equals x squared would trace underneath this would be the shadow of my curve. Same thing here, if I shine a light from over here and it's directly perpendicular to this x, z plane, you can see how the shadow of this curve comes up in this direction. And if I shine a light from over here, directly perpendicular to this y, z plane, you can see how the shadow of this curve you know, would look something like this. And again, I haven't drawn it perfectly, but that's how we use the shadows to draw a picture of this curve. So that's how you can change vector equations into parametric equations, find an initial point for the parameter value t equals zero, sketch some projections onto your coordinate planes, and then use them to draw a picture of the vector equation.